Hey, welcome to this video on creating a parametric portal shed. So in this first part, we're going to just look at creating um, a parametric, a parametrically defined uh, portal frame shed. Uh, and in the second part, Stuart is going to show you how to plug that into the SkySieve API. So what we're using here is called uh, a software called Rhinoceros. Um, I'm on Rhinoceros 7 here. And what it is is a 3D modeling software which has some extra capability like scripts um, if you're familiar with Revit, it's kind of like Dynamo. Uh, so you can sort of visually create uh, scripts to uh, create a model. So for example, I could type in here construct node or point and it puts a point at the origin. So I could feed some numbers into X, Y, Z to place that node in a certain spot. So we can do that with lots of different elements and create define a model. So what we're gonna do is start by putting in some sliders. If you haven't already, download Rhinoceros, um, probably number seven as well now and uh, just open up a model, select probably a large template model, and then uh, open up your viewer to the right here, and then just click the button here to open Grasshopper. You can also type uh, into the command line Grasshopper, and it will launch it as well. So once you've got that ready, we're just gonna create some sliders. So the first thing is um, to create a slider, we can just type in here slider, or a faster way would be to if we wanted to set the min and max bound of the slider, we can just uh, type in the numbers here. So we can say, for example, we want a building width. Uh, we want it to be anywhere from five to 20 meters. Uh, we can just do five dot dot 20 and that will create a slider. But you can see here that it's just created five, six, seven. So in whole numbers. So if we did that again and put 5.0, that's going to, and then dot dot 20, that's going to create it to one decimal place. And maybe we'll do I think one's enough for this. So that, that will increment in 100 millimeter uh, step sizes. So then you can just double click on this and give it a meaningful name. So we'll just call it width. And then I'm going to do this for the uh, a few other things. So we'll have the eave height, the ridge height, um, the step size between portals, and then the number of portals. So I'll just skip this part uh, until they're created. Okay, so now we've got the first four. We're just going to put one more in, which is the number of portals. So we want this to be an integer, so we can just do one dot dot uh, and say 20. So we can have, let's do 30. We can have up to 30 portals. And now you'll see that number will go up in whole numbers because we didn't put in any decimal places. So I'll just call this one um, portals. Now, if I just highlight all of them, I can center them all like this, or even go to the left and the right. So if I hit that one there, they'll all align to the left. Now, what you can do with that is highlight them all. Uh, usually you can right click here. There is a bug uh, with Grasshopper. I think it is only on Mac when you're on dual displays where the right click functionality doesn't work yet. So what I'll do is I'll move this to my second display and carry on from there. So now we're on back on the other screen. If I highlight these and right click, we can group them. So I just like to do this to keep things uh, together. Um, next thing we want to do is probably look at creating if another parameter, the half span. So this is going to be helpful for nodes. So what we might actually do first is we'll start constructing a few points just so we can get a display. Um, so if we go double click on the empty space and do construct point, and you want to pick this one here where it takes an XYZ to create a point. So to create the uh, first point, we're just going to leave it there. If you wanted to be able to move your origin, then you probably want some extra sliders to define where this is. Uh, for us, we're just going to have it sitting at 0, 0, 0. And then I'm just going to create another one of these. Um, and we'll have five points to define our portal. So we'll have uh, the eave lines and then the ridge and then uh, both the bottom points of the columns. So if we just put them together, we can start connecting them to uh, our controls, which will define where they are. So the second point will take the building width and put that into the X and that will uh, take it across. And then now we can move this slider and you can see that the building width will change. So we're zoomed out a fair bit here, so I might just zoom in. And then we can start creating the uh, eave points. So the next one would be uh, by taking the Z value. So for me, the Z is vertical here. Um, so in the next one, 
I will take the eve height and put that into the Z. So now we've got another eve height here, which will change. And then we're going to do the second one, which we're going to need to then take this X and this Z. So what we could do here is you can either just drag straight from here into that, or you can instead double click this just to keep things neat and it creates what's called a relay. So then we can drag from that relay down to this point and we might just do the same here. So if I drag here, in my case it's command, it might be uh, control if you're on Windows, then you can see there's the minus when I try to connect this cable. So that'll disconnect that cable. We can do the same for this one here and then drag this down into the Z. So now as we change the Eve height, they'll both go up. As we change the building width, they'll both go to the right. So then the last one we want to create is uh, obviously the, the ridge point. So this is going to take the ridge height, which we will take from here and put into the Z. And if we just take that up, you can see that's uh, going up. But what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to work out what the half span is of this. So there's another component called uh, expression and that lets you type in a mathematical expression. So what I'm going to do in here is just go uh, X on two and it'll take whatever the X is divide it by two and that will be the output. If I zoom right in here, I can actually then click minus on that because we are not interested in the Y and now we want to take the width into the expression and if you hover over here you'll see what's coming out is 7.6 which is half of 15.2 so we can grab that and drag that into the X and now we have uh, basic nodes for our frame so if we move this you'll see that it looks it's always in the center and if we move the ridge height you can see that the ridge height will go up and down as well so the next thing we want to do is probably duplicate all of these nodes or well, what we might just do first is take this and group them. So now we've got, uh, and if you want to customize the groups, you can right click on them and uh, pick one of these. You could pick blob or I think I like rectangular outline the most. And then you can also put in uh, scribble and that will just let you um, sort of type in any text. So we'll put nodes in there, that can be in there. If I click on it and then shift click this, I can do add to group and now nodes is in this group as well. So that's just a good way to keep things organized. You can also customize the color of that group if you just click down here. Now we'll duplicate these nodes uh, into the page. We're going to need to work out the positioning based on the step size and uh, the number of portals. So the tool for this would be series. So if you double click and type in series, we get this little component here. So if you wave over, it'll tell you what, uh, what parameters it takes. So the first number in the series, which you can see it defaults to zero. Uh, then here will be the step size. So step size for each successive number. And then this one will be number of values in the series. So that's exactly what we're after. We have a number of values here, the portals. And then we also have uh, the spacing size, which will be N, the step size. So we can pass that in. And if you just double click here and uh, do a double quote, it'll show panel, you can hit enter. And now you can just sort of see, just to visualize what's coming out of here, you can also hover this. But if you just do this, you can, um, it's an easy way to see what's uh, being produced. So we've got, <clears throat> as we change that slider, we've got eight portals, 24, 27. So these are the these are the numbers that we want to use. So it's a step size of three. If we change that, you'll see that they'll all change as well. So these values that are coming out are just numbers. They're not actually what we need to turn this into is a vector. So we need to say uh, we want to create points that are going along the y direction. So easily done. We can type in y, and you get this unit y. Uh, plug the series into here. And now we have a series of vectors instead. So if we put our panel back and connect to that, you'll see now they're actually coordinates. Whereas before, or if you just take them straight out of here, you're just getting numbers. So because we put it into Y, the X and the Z default to zero. Uh, so now 
we can take this and start constructing um, or duplicating these nodes into the page to create different portals. So what we'll use here is the move component. So type in move, double click this one, and it takes two parameters. Again, you can hover and you'll see the geometry and the translation vector. So we've created the vector down here. So we can go and plug that straight into here. And then we want to say, this is the geometry that we want to move. So now you can see down there that we've got uh, a bunch of points moving along the Y direction. So we're going to do the same for all of these. So I'll just skip through this. Okay, so now we've got all those move pieces. You can see that they're going into the page. Um, I might like to increase the spacing of these portals a bit more. So I can bump them up just by sliding that. Uh, I'm going to grab these and align them and put them into a group. That's good practice. So you can see uh, th things get a bit tangly here, so it's good to sort of keep it organized um, as much as possible. So even these two down here, I might um, put them into a group. So that can live down there. We've got all these points. Now, an important thing to see here is that this point say here, so the one on the origin and these points, if I click on these, you'll see they all highlight. If I click away, they'll not be highlighted. But if I click this one, that first one will be highlighted. So you can see that it's actually creating um, more instances. It's not transforming the original object into these objects. It's creating, it's sort of duplicating them. So what we can do is take this one and turn off preview. So now that one actually disappears. And even if we select it, you don't see it. And if you select these ones, you do see them because they're not hidden. And you can tell that by the gray color of the box, the darker gray. So as you move along, you're sort of creating, you just keep transforming what you have. And then you, once you do that, you don't really need to worry about what was done before. So we can highlight all of these here and then just right click in space and do preview off. And that will get rid of those initial nodes, but we still have all these nodes here. The next step here would probably be to create uh, an eaves line and a ridge line. So if we just looked at this one here is our left eaves line. And you can also, uh, you can go along here and give these names. So we could say uh, left eave line. Now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna create uh, the, the eave line with these. So it's, it's quite, um, initially when you start with Grasshopper, it's quite overwhelming the way the data is transformed between components. Um, we'll be looking at grafting soon, which will make your head spin if you're not used to that. But to start with, you can what you can do is just hover here and you can see that out of here, we've got one point and that's defined by X, Y, Z there. And then we pass that into here. And because we're passing six values, it's gonna multiply uh, each of those. It, it's gonna take that point and then it's gonna apply each of these translations to it each of these vectors that we've created. And then from that, it creates all those points. So the output then becomes all those points multiplied by that vector. So you can even, you could do your panel here again and plug that into there and you can see what's coming out a bit more easy. So the next uh, thing to do is we're gonna connect all these, uh, these nodes along here. So this is because we have a series or like it's like an array of points if you're familiar with coding it's just like a python list or a javascript array um, what we can do is take the polyline tool uh, where where are we here we are polyline so if you wave over here or if you wave over the component it tells you what it does so create a polyline connecting a number of points so we have a number of points in a list here so we're just going to go and connect this one geometry to this one. And you can see that's just plotted a line straight through those points. So if you want to, you can add a Boolean into here, um, like a switch and it'll close. So if you were drawing something that was curved and then you wanted the last two points to close, you can add that, com uh, add that parameter to the C here. So then we're gonna do the same for these other ones. Um, disconnect that, 
put that one in. And what you can actually do is if you just take this one and drop it there, it'll break the other connection. If you wanted two connections to come in, you can hover and hold shift and then that'll plug both in. So if I drag from here, hold command for me, then I can minus that one. So now you can see we've got these three lines. Um, I could turn off these. I'm probably gonna use them for now just so I know what's going on. So this is a polyline, which is obviously has nodes along it. We just can't see them. So it's helpful just to leave this on for now. Okay, and once we've got them, our ridge lines. So we're not obviously not interested in um, putting a beam along the support uh, line. So we, we can just leave them off for now. Um, but we will use them to connect the columns and then the rafters. So I'm just gonna put them up here and group them. And that is now our ridge lines and our ridge line and eave lines. And then down here, we're going to uh, do the last thing, which will be connecting all these points. So this is where the data manipulation can be a bit confusing. Um, it might take a little while and maybe just watch this a few times do it a few times, try it on different components, um, watch a few other videos if you're scratching your head over this one. So the next tool will be Merge. And I'll try and explain this one the best I can. So what you can do here is you can pass it two data streams and it will sort of zip them together. So what we have is all these series of nodes. We want to connect this series of nodes and then the left eave, we want to connect, we sort of want to zip these together to create individual lines. So that our end goal here is to plot a line between this, this node and this node, this node and this node, and so on. But we kind of need to sort of translate that data from going across to going up. So what we can do is uh, create a data tree. So by taking uh, this one as data stream one, and then taking this one as data stream two, we can zoom in here and just get rid of that. So now if we look at our, put our panel in and have a look at what's coming out, we're getting just one long list of points here. So this isn't quite what we're after because if we um, just tried to plot a polyline between these two, you're gonna see what's gonna happen here is that all of these points are gonna get connected because they're in sort of one list. So you can see it's gone along and then it's gone back to the beginning and gone along again. So what we need to do is transform this data as it comes into the merge tool and sort of separate each of these points that is coming in into its own uh, list. So what we do is we work with a data tree which it's kind of like a list of lists. So what we can do is right click D1 and press graft. And then we can do the same for D2. And if you look at the data now as it comes in, or let's ungraft two and look at the difference. So you can see that we've created six sort of branches and the, the whole uh, lot of these creates a tree. So we've got six branches, which is sort of six lists with one value in them. So that's defined by the n there, n equals one. So one entry. If we go back down to here, this is all in the one list with six values. So we've broken this into sort of six lists or six groups, six different groups of lists, but there's only one item in each of these lists. So as we bring the second one in, if we do the same, now our data looks a little different. So what we have is each of these branches defined by this group here, one, two, three, and so on. So you can see our columns have actually now been plotted correctly. So this is one branch is a list of points. So point one, point two, another branch, point one, point two. And if you pass this tree into polyline, it knows how to handle this data. It knows that this is a tree um, I need to go to each branch and then connect each of the points in those branches as a separate item. So it's just a way to do uh, bulk effort in one hit. So you could individually go through and break these up, but if you start to learn your way around how, to, how the data changes and how the graph tool works, 
Um, and there's also flatten, which goes the other way. Um, you can do some really pow powerful movements in just one or two components. So if we get rid of that, we'll keep our polyline here. And we're going to do the same now for uh, the rest of them. So I'm going to grab a merge tool here. I'm going to hit graft on both of these. I'm going to get a polyline and I'm going to connect that in. And then I'm just going to copy these down. We can align these, align them, group them. Got to click out here and group. And now we've got our group of lines and we can start to go through and connect them. So we want to go from left Eve, that's D1, and then to Ridge. And then we want to go from Ridge down to the right Eve. And then from the right Eve down to the last uh, supports. So you can see how this gets a bit tangly. This is why it's good to group things. Now, if we go back to the beginning, we can just move all of these points or even let's just get rid of these points or hide them. If we go to the beginning, we can move our width and the width of the building moves. We can add more portals. We can change the spacing of the portals. We can adjust the ridge height and we can also move the eave height. So that just about does it. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at how we can connect this now and turn it into a structural model using the SkySiv API. So our team has developed a Grasshopper plugin, which means that you just like Kangaroo up here, um, you can add SkySiv and use our tools right from within Grasshopper. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below and we'll try and help you out through this. See ya.